TLC. Hope you're enjoying this online service so far. My name is Laura Jones, and here are this week's announcements. We've got some great news. To help meet the needs of our community, we will now be having our Helping Hands Food Bank twice a month. It'll be open on the first and third Saturday of every month, starting on May 2nd. And this will continue for the duration of the lockdown. That being said, we need your help. There's a number of ways that you can help. We're looking for volunteers to help pack grocery bags, meet clients, sanitize items, carry out bags. We're also looking for food donations to help supplement what we already have. Food donations can be dropped off between 9 o'clock a.m. and 1 o'clock p.m. on the following dates. April 28th, May 12th, May 26th, June 16th, June 30th. You can email Leslie Klotz. She's our food bank coordinator. You can email her at leslie at christianlifecenter.ca. If you're interested in volunteering or you have any questions or want more details, she's the person to reach out to. We are still looking for someone to help us out with video editing. We need someone who is well versed in using either Premiere or Video Cut editing software and is willing to donate some of their time to help us out. If you are interested or if you know somebody who might be interested, please contact Pastor Andrew by emailing him. His email address is andrew at christianlifecenter.ca. There are four ways for you to give your regular tithes and offerings. You can text the word GIVE to 905-686-1411. You could also visit our website at christianlifecenter.ca and there's a donate um, tab that you'll find there on the website. You can also send in a money transfer, an email money transfer to life at christianlifecenter.ca or you can of course mail in a check to the church. The address is 1030 Ravenscroft Road, Ajax, Ontario and the postal code is L1T4R9. Thanks for your support and generosity and your faithfulness in this way. If you need prayer, you can text the word prayer to 905-686-1411 or you can email us at life at christianlifecenter.ca. You can also email any of our CLC staff email addresses and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Make sure you interact with us and tell us your thoughts throughout the sermon. On the YouTube app, there's a comment section and if you click on that, it'll open up a comment stream where you can add your own thoughts and comments throughout the sermon or just say hello to one another. Make sure you get on that chat. It's a really neat opportunity to communicate and interact with one another. I'm Laura and those were this week's announcements. Welcome to our service today. Uh, great to have you join with us. I want to start off by expressing my shock and my horror at uh, what has happened in Nova Scotia this past week. I want to offer my sincerest condolences to the families of those that were involved and those that lost a loved one. Um, it really is a reminder for me that this much hate and this much disregard for our fellow man is exactly why the church needs to step up and show and express the love of Jesus. There is no other time like now when the world needs to see that we are real Christians and that we need to be known for what we stand for, not what we stand against. Um, we are for loving our neighbor. We are for Jesus who can actually take and change people's lives completely and totally. Any life that surrenders to him. We are for a God who loved us and died for us. And uh, it's time that the church uh, starts rising up and letting people see that. I would suggest to you that we really figure out ways during this time uh, period in our lives to take care. Figure out ways to take care uh, of one another during this time. If you see somebody that is suffering, somebody that is in need, please reach out in godly love and make sure that they know that they're not alone. Say a prayer for Nova Scotia today, would you, as well? I'm sure that some of you have been doing that already, but, but say a prayer for them. And uh, they need us today. Now more than ever before, we as humanity need to stand together. So I just wanted to uh, take a moment and, and talk about that this morning. All right, if you are just joining in with us, 
We have been uh, working on a series called It Was By Faith. We have been talking a lot about men and women in the Old Testament who exercised faith in their day-to-day lives. And uh, they really saw God move as a result of that. And they saw the favor of God on their lives as a result of that as well. I want to start off today by asking a question. But I'm not going to ask the question to everybody. I'm going to ask the question to just a select group of people. And so what I did was I took to Zoom and I gathered a bunch of dads around me. And I asked them two simple questions. I want you to listen to the video. Just take a look. All right, it's great to have you guys with us. I uh, really appreciate you helping me uh, with the uh, sermon that I'm doing here today. So I've got two questions for you, and uh, you're either going to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, okay? Um, first question is this. You all have children. Do you love your children? We got a thumbs up for most everybody. Good. That's good to hear. I'm glad. All right, second question is this, and this is the tricky one. If you knew for sure that God was telling you to do so, thumbs up or thumbs down, would you sacrifice your children to God? Would you lay them on the altar and kill them? They're not so sure on this one. Okay, so we're a little divided. One or two have said yes, the rest of you say no. All right, you've been a big help for me. Thank you, much appreciated. You'll have to uh, continue to watch to see uh, what this is all about. Bless you. Thank you. Okay, so for the rest of you dads that are listening in uh, here today, um, you didn't get on the call, but what about you? Think about it for your life. Would you do that? If God came to you and said, you know, here's what I want you to do. I want you to sacrifice your son, your only son. Would you do that? Um, What does that make you feel uh, about God? Perhaps for the rest of us, what does that make you feel about God? Chances are some of you are already thinking, you know what? That's not the kind of God that we serve. Or is it? You know, there was a time in the Bible when God asked a father to sacrifice his child as a way to test his obedience. He didn't actually want this guy to do it, but he wanted to know if this guy would do it. And I want to uh, take you to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 7 and 8, uh, sorry, 17 and 18, uh, 17 and 19, pardon me. And I want to uh, just read this to you and listen to what it has to say uh, about this guy named Abraham. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if God, excuse me, if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. Now, we've already talked about Abraham. I get that. But this is one of those uh, just really incredible stories about uh, this, this really incredible man. It's probably the most defining story about Abraham. Uh, and it actually comes from Genesis chapter 22. I'm just going to read portions of Genesis 22 for you to give you a sense of what the story is. Some of you may not know it. Um, let me read it to you. Genesis 22, kind of verses 1 to 14. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'll, I'll read portions of it. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. God said, take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. So the scripture goes on to say that Abraham, of course, took a couple of servants with him that he had. He took Isaac, his son. He took a donkey, took some wood for the sacrifice, and off they went to the uh, the mountain. They get to the mountain, and uh, Abraham says to his servants, you guys wait here. The boy and I will go make a sacrifice. Um, and he places the wood on the boy's shoulders. We, we assume he's somewhere between, you know, a, an early teen to a young adult. Um, and, and off they trek up to the mountain. And on the way, uh, when you come to uh, verse 7, Isaac actually turns to his dad and he says, Father. And uh, Abraham replies, yes, my son. And Isaac says, we have the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Verse 8, Abraham says, God will provide the sheep for the burnt offering, my son. And so on they went together. And they get up in verse 9, they get up to the top of the mountain, and Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. And then he grabbed his son Isaac, and he tied him up, and he laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Verse 10 says, Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. And at that moment, that exact moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Verse 12, 
Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Verse 13, then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its thorns in a thicket. And so he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. And Abraham called the place Yahweh Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. Incredible story of the faith of this man, uh, Abraham. Hebrews 11 really talks about Abraham's faith and how absolutely incredible it was. I want you to understand something as we get started with this story this morning. Isaac was the fulfillment of the promise of God to Abraham by God himself. And now here we have God in this story telling Abraham to give up that promise. And so Abraham's faith in God actually led him to be obedient to God because he reasoned that if he had to sacrifice Isaac to God, that God was powerful enough to bring Isaac back from the dead. That is extreme obedience. And it plays a major part in our story today. And I want you to just kind of keep that in mind as we go along. There's at least three things that I want you to understand from this story. And I'm going to kind of go through the first two rather quickly and then we'll slow down, down a little bit on the, uh, on the second one, on the third one, pardon me. First, I want you to understand that faith is required for the follower of God because God will often test us with things that we don't understand. Now remember, Hebrews 11 is all about the faith of people in the Old Testament. Faith is required for us as well because God will often test us with things that we don't understand. The Bible clearly says in Genesis 22:11 and in Hebrews, uh, excuse me, 22:1 and Hebrews 11 that God was testing Abraham's faith. The problem is, Abraham didn't know that God was testing his faith. Now, we do because we have the, the beauty of hindsight and we're reading about it, but Abraham was actually living it. And he had no clue what God was up to. That's why his faith was required. Now, maybe you're a little more spiritual than I am, and that's great if you are, but I find myself often wondering why God does what he does and why God does what he does the way that he does it. Why does God allow certain things to happen in my life that, frankly, I'd rather not experience? I don't want to go through some of the pain and the suffering uh, that life brings to me sometimes. The answers to the, the questions that we have sometimes in our life as to why really hinge around this idea that I need to accept by faith what God is doing because I don't have to know everything that God is doing in order to serve him by faith. I have to accept the fact that his ways are not my ways. And these tests are designed really to activate my faith, to get my faith going, to, to, to reveal my faith, both to myself and to God. These tests are really to help me to understand, to trust God in spite of what's going on and when I don't know what's going on around me. Faith keeps us close to God, even when we don't know what he's up to. So let me ask you a question. It might be relevant for you uh, this morning. How much of the challenges in your life, the frustrations and the trials in your life, are merely God trying to test you? Merely God helping you to activate your faith. Now, you may never know how much they are God doing that. And so, here's my challenge to you. When God doesn't make sense, that's the time to exercise your faith, not give it up. If the story of Abraham is any indication, there's a reason why God is doing what God is doing. And so my challenge to you is stick with it. Don't give up before the answer comes. Keep your head in the game and keep on believing in God in spite of what's going on around you. It's really important that when we don't understand, we don't give up, we press in further, we stick closer to God, and we let him eventually reveal the answer to us. The second thing I want you to understand this morning is this. Faith keeps us obedient during those testing times, and it's obedience that pleases God. This story of faith is all about obedience and how far you and I are willing to go in order to prove our obedience to God. You see, Abraham was asked to sacrifice to God the one thing that he held dearest. That son, that, that, that precious son that God had given to him as we learned a few weeks ago in his old age. Something that was given to him by God. So before he could make an idol out of it, God asked for it back. And that's really key for us. Because a lot of times we take those things that are dearest to us and we make idols out of them. And God says, you shall have no other idols, no other gods in your life except me. And so before we make an idol of those things that we hold dearest to our lives, God asks for them back. That's what he did with Abraham. Abraham now had a decision to make. Was he going to obey or was he going to disobey? 
Friends, I want to remind you that obedience is really the physical proof that God is indeed Lord and Master of our lives. We can say whatever we want. We can do all of the, the right things, all of the uh, so-called religious things. But if we aren't being obedient in the easy things and in the hard things, if we aren't being obedient in the little things and in the big things, if we aren't being obedient consistently and completely, then we really aren't getting what the life of a child of God is all about. We aren't getting that God isn't as interested in our comfort as he is in our character. And obedience in the midst of those testing times actually produces within us good character. And if we see them uh, as, as issues or challenges or trials in our lives that are sent by God to help us to become better, then we'll understand that he's indeed a loving God and he's doing what's best for us. What God is really doing, frankly, is he's proving us. He's making us stronger. Most of you know that diamonds start out as carbon, and they are turned into diamonds only after many, many years of extreme pressure. Then when that lump of carbon, which is actually quite brittle, has turned into a beautiful diamond, that diamond becomes the hardest natural substance known to man on the planet, all thanks to these many years of testing. This is really what God is doing in us. He's forming us and he's shaping us into something beautiful, into something worthwhile. And he's using pressure and he's using trials and he's using testing to do that in our lives. But it's not going to happen if we're not obedient in the midst of that testing because obedience allows us to go through that testing and to come out on the other side. Instead, if all we do is kick and scream and if all we do is throw a temper tantrum, uh, tantrum like a two-year-old because we're not getting our own way, then we'll never be in the proper frame of mind to see what God is actually up to. Friends, I want you to understand that God gives us testing appropriate to the level of our spiritual maturity. I want you to rest assured that no matter what you are going through, no matter what the test is that you're going through right now, you are ready for it because God says you're ready for it. And he knows you better than you know yourself. Don't give up. Refuse to walk away. Resist the urge to be apathetic in your Christian life just because things are tough and maybe not going the way that you thought that they should. You see, some of the greatest lessons in our lives actually come in the midst of our most difficult challenges. Some of you have been there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you haven't been there, this is where faith comes into play. And if you'll have faith in God to do what he said he would do in your life and to, if you'll trust him to have your best interests in mind and to grow you properly, you'll find in the end that God is a God that can be trusted. Friends, our obedience to God in the midst of those difficult challenges actually opens the door for God to do something very special in our lives. And that actually brings me to our third point. Let me explain. Thirdly, I want you to understand that faith is required because without, of it, without it, we would not have a fresh revelation of God. This is key for us today, so I want you to hear this clearly. Faith, testing, obedience, and revelation are all ingredients in the same casserole called spiritual growth. Our faith in the midst of tests really should translate into obedience, which opens the door for God's revelation in our lives. Let me put it another way. When things don't make sense, when God is asking you to do something that doesn't seem right, at least according to your logic, when he's asking you to do something that makes you feel very uncomfortable or very uneasy, can I just suggest to you, it's at that moment that you need to get ready. It's at that moment that you need to be really prepared because when we are obedient in those really tough times, it's then when God begins to break through with a fresh revelation of who he is. It's at that moment when we stay the course, when we continue to remain obedient, that God proves to us what he's, uh, what he's about and who he is and what he's up to. I read you the story already. When God provided for Abraham a ram whose horns had been caught in the thickets, because Abraham went to that point where he was going to be obedient, God stopped him, the angel of the Lord stopped him, and God provided a ram whose horns were caught in the thickets. Abraham began then to realize that God was a God who provided. He found out that when he was obedient, it opened a door for a fresh revelation of who God is. You see, if Abraham hadn't been obedient, he might not have learned that lesson. Because he was obedient, 
God revealed himself, and Abraham ended up naming the place Jehovah-Jireh, the God who provides, or the Lord will provide. Notice that he didn't name the place Jehovah, the God who asks you, asks you to do things that don't make sense. He didn't name that place, uh, name it that, uh, that name. This is because his focus was on who God was and on who God revealed himself to be. His focus was no longer on the directive to kill his son. That was forgotten. Now, some of you uh, are here today, some of you uh, ladies are here today, and, uh, and you have had a, a child. And it's, it's really similar for me to those of you who, who have had a child, you ladies. Now, the truth is, us guys can't even imagine the pain that you have gone through uh, as a woman when you had that child. In fact, if it were up to guys to have children, this world would be a very desolate place, wouldn't it? I, I should be able to hear all of the guys and all of the women say amen to that one. Yet for all of the pain and all of the labor and all of the uncertainty and all of the suffering that you go through as a woman when you're about to birth a child, when that child is born, you, you really don't focus on all of that pain and suffering, do you? Instead, what you focus on is that brand new baby that's now laying in your arms. All the rest of it's forgotten. And for Abraham, it really was in, in the same way true. He, he didn't any longer think about what God had asked him to do. He was now realizing God was a God who provided. God had not forgot about him. I think it's the same way for us uh, spiritually. We do tend to suffer through a lot of things that don't make sense to us in life, and we wonder what God is up to. But God is saying, listen, if you'll remain faithful, if you will trust me, if you will be obedient to me, you will see the results. You will see the why of what I'm up to on the other side of that pain. The difference between childbirth and spiritual obedience is that at any time we can stop being obedient. But mama, you know and I know that no matter what you do, that baby is coming, right? You see, God gives us a choice to be obedient. And that's why we have to go through some of these challenging times in our lives with the habit of obedience already established in our lives. If we can't be obedient to God in the little things, if we can't trust God and have faith in Him in those minor things in our lives, then we're certainly not going to have faith in Him when the big things come along, the challenging times come along. We need to establish a life of faith in God now so that when those tough times come, God can reveal Himself to us in a brand new way. One of my uh, favorite verses in the Bible is from Psalm 25, verse 14, and it says, The secret of the Lord is with those that fear Him. I want you to catch that today. God doesn't reveal secrets about himself to you and I if we're just kind of casually handling um, his commandments and guidelines for our lives. No, no, no. He reveals deep secrets about himself to us when we're obedient with what we know, when we've proven that we are willing to do whatever it takes to follow him. These kinds of people are people that know how to fear God. To fear God is really to be more concerned with God's will for our lives than our will for our lives. It's to hate evil, according to Proverbs 8, verse 13. It's to hate pride and arrogance. It's to hate corruption and perverse speech, that verse goes on to say. So if you want God to reveal himself to you, if you want God to show himself uh, more of who he is to you, then you need to walk in obedience. You need to make sure that you don't allow evil in any form to come into your life. Now, it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a daily learning. But when God reveals to you evil that's in your life, do something about it. Repent. Walk away from it. We need to learn to listen to God and to do what he says, no matter how illogical, how preposterous, or how irrational it may seem. You know, what God may ask you to do can't be any more outrageous than spitting into dirt and creating mud and taking that mud and wiping it on a man's eyes to heal him of his blindness. It can't be any more outrageous than pairing an army of 32,000 down to 300 and going out to war against another army of 135,000. What God may ask you to do can't be any more outrageous than being thrown into a den of hungry lions and living, or being thrown into a furnace so hot that it burns your captors, but you survive. It can't be any more outrageous than being asked to build a boat that takes 100 years to build, and then watching these animals two by two come onto uh, that boat. It can't be any more outrageous than leaving one of your best friends to die and rot in a tomb for three days. 
And then coming back after three days and raising him from the dead. It can't be any, any more outrageous than, you know, being asked to marry a prostitute as a word picture to the nation of Israel. Or walk around naked for three years as a sign to two countries about what's going to happen. These are all actual stories in the Bible. Things that actually happen and they seem outrageous to our, to our mindset. You see, the problem is I haven't given you the context for any one of those stories, but I, I want you to understand today that at face value, though they may seem quite shocking, I want you to trust me that God knew what he was doing in the midst of each of those. And, and when obedience was involved, incredible things happened, and people's lives were changed, and God was end up, ended up being honored because of it. So what he's asking you to do can't be any more outrageous than the things that we already see in the Bible. So trust him. Here it is, friends. God doesn't do things normally. If you haven't figured it out by now, you haven't either been serving God you know, too long or, or maybe serving God too well. God doesn't do things normally, at least not normal according to us. He doesn't follow our neat little guidelines for right living. Our God actually specializes in the impossible. And he says to us, let me amaze you and let me make you wonder again at how incredible I am. He sets free those who deserve to be captive. He ministers life to those who are dead in their sins. And he breathes hope into the hopeless. Why does he do these things? Because he is a God who wants, us, wants to show us his power and his provision and his presence. But he can't do that if we don't first learn to obey him. You know, I think as a Christian, we too often look at life through the lens of human reasoning and not enough through the lens of the supernatural. We see the impossible and we can't get past the impossible. Fortunately, Abraham wasn't afflicted with that kind of spiritual paralysis. He lived by accepting the impossible no matter how outrageous it was. He set his mind first to being obedient to God and letting God take care of the details. And that's a great lesson for all of us to learn. Let me, uh, let me conclude with a few, th with a few things uh, this, uh, this morning. Maybe you are listening today to God and you are afraid to trust God for those things that you treasure the most. Maybe it's your home or your family or your job or your reputation. Maybe it's even your money. Whatever it is, as Christians, the story of Abraham reminds us to hold uh, on to those things of this earth very lightly while holding on to God very tightly. Things of this earth, those things that we deem important, are temporary. But you know, I hope, and I know, that our relationship with God is for eternity. It's very eternal. Friends, the extent to which we are willing to get up our treasures on this earth will be the extent to which we receive the blessings of God. Abraham gave up one of those things that was nearest and dearest to his heart. And God in return blessed him and God showered him with favor and riches and power and influence. Now, God may not necessarily do the same thing to you in terms of riches and power, but you will definitely see his hand upon you as you're obedient to his will. As a result, God will reveal himself to you in brand new ways and your relationship with him will go deeper than it has ever gone before. I want you to remember this as we close. The greater the test, the greater the lesson, and the greater the potential for spiritual growth and revelation. So rejoice that God is at work in your life today. Let me close with a few questions. We started this last week. These are questions that I'd like you to take some time to um, you know, either ask somebody that's connected with you or close right there with you and your family or somebody else that's watching today. Or maybe it's just something that you want to journal and think about. Let me ask you four questions. Number one, what is your Isaac? In other words, what is the thing that you cherish the most and you value the most on this earth? Number two, how would you feel if God told you to give it up? Would it be hard to give it up? Those two questions kind of go together. How would you feel if God told you to give it up and would it be hard? Number three, what areas of your life do you need to be obedient in even though it doesn't make sense? I can't answer that question for you, only you can. And number four, what have you been asking God to reveal to you? I challenge you to keep praying for that and wait for him to reveal the truth or wait for him to reveal the sin that is blocking you from understanding that. Okay? Four questions I want you to work through uh, with those that are around you or maybe just even make them part of your personal prayer time. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for fresh revelations of you.
Thank you that you have not forgotten about us and that daily you bring us through things in life to teach us more about yourself. Father, I pray for every person that's out there today that they would gain a unique and fresh perspective on what you are up to in their lives and that they, like Abraham, wouldn't resist what you're asking them to do, but they would surrender to it. No matter how illogical or rational or preposterous it is, God, you are in control of every aspect of our lives. Bless our church family. Bless those that are listening in today. Keep them safe. Reveal yourself to them today, God. Please show them that you are a God who is personal and you are a God who loves them and you have not forgotten about them. Just keep them, keep them aware of that so clearly today. Lord, I bless you and I thank you for all that you are doing. We do pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. The Lord bless you.
CLC, thank you so much for joining with us today. Don't forget, if you have a prayer request or just want to get in touch with us, please send an email to life at christianlifecenter.ca or use any of the staff's individual CLC email addresses. Make sure to like or subscribe to our YouTube channel or stay connected to us on Instagram or Facebook. There's also our weekly emails as well as our website. Be sure to spread the word about all those avenues. In a moment, you'll have an opportunity to pause some discussion questions about today's sermon. Take some time to talk about these with your family or video call some family or friends to keep the conversation going. God bless you. Stay safe and stay healthy. And until next time, CLC, have a great week.